Here we are at Freeze Art Fair 2015. It's the first morning of the fair, which is traditionally VIP morning. And here you can see already some furious shopping going on. Uh, but this year, for the first time, just around the corner there, is the Freeze Reading Room, a quieter and more contemplative space. And I took the opportunity earlier to talk to the Italian artist Francesco Vezzoli. So, Francesco, let's go back to 2005, yes. which is uh, when I first became aware of your work um, at the Venice Biennale, mm -hmm. a piece called uh, Trailer for the Remake of Gore Vidal's Caligula, which was um, exactly as described there, a, a, a trailer for a mock film. But it starred Courtney Love, people like Courtney Love, Helen Mirren, Benicio del Toro, as well as Gore Vidal himself. Yes. Uh, it was very funny, it made a lot of people laugh. What, what was the motivation behind that? What was going on? I mean, I studied in London, so I was a student when the young British artists were exploding. Um, at the time, in 2005, I was living in Los Angeles, so I was just making connection between the entertainment industry and the art world. The art world was craving increasingly so for a type of exposure that only the entertainment industry kind of gets. I was seeing many video artists moving into cinema. I've seen many of my peers kind of despising my love for stars and divas or my obsession for a certain Hollywood language. And then I've seen them wanting to go into that industry while I never was interested in doing that. So I wanted to make a uh, a piece of art that could reflect all these contradictions. A movie produced by Bob Guccione that was supposed to be screen written by Gore Vidal and directed by Tinto Brass, it would be like, you know, uh, David Zwirner producing a Botero retrospective curated by Norman Rosenthal. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, uh, a clash of three human beings that could probably never get along together. Yeah, a lot of people ask, you know, I know what it's like to deal with celebrities and mm -hmm. they usually have agents and PR people and you have to supply them with mm -hmm. lists of questions. How do you get, how did you sell the project to them? Strangely enough, at this point it would be more difficult. Back then I was really like a kid sending flowers and pestering people. In the end it was a kind of, uh, not easy, it was extremely complicated and nervous wrecking but uh, but somehow it did it did happen in some crazy yeah. unpredictable way and uh, and that was my point as well that I was obsessed by the fact that so many pop artists in the past had used second-hand image uh, of, of pop icons but never involved them directly yeah. into their artwork yeah. I was actually obsessed by the Richard Hamilton you know, like uh, Cuffs, uh, Robert Fraser, Mick Jagger. But, you know, there was never like a moment, even back in those days, where you could say that a real major figure of pop culture was directly involved into an artwork. Yeah. You know, like yeah. personally. Yeah. So I felt that was something needed as sure, well. Sure. And so that's and, why I went that way. Yeah, and you followed it up uh, a couple of years later um, with another piece, which I think was in Venice as well. Yes. Uh, Demo Crazy. Demo Crazy. Demo Crazy. Yes. Um, which featured an American presidential campaign. Yes. And the two candidates yes. were Sharon Stone yes. and Bernard Henri Levy. Yes. Fabulous combination. Where did that come from? Uh, well, as Pirandello would say, fiction can never surpass reality. So now we have uh, uh, Donald Trump running for president. So it's <laughs> like um, my intelligence has been completely, I would say, tr trumpeted, like <laughs> trumped. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we went to Washington. We hired uh, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, top the equivalent of the top curators so we really hired the top spin doctors yeah. to create a campaign around these two ideal candidates and uh, and then I felt it was important to pick up a, a Hollywood celebrity that had some kind of uh, Hollywood ambitions or uh, had political ambitions or pretentiousness and then we had to hire somebody that was objectively involved in politics luckily they both agreed and uh, uh, all that matters for me is to uh, 
clarify that the style, the visual style, the edit of those videos was um, done by the people of of the business. You know, I a bit like with Caligula. Yeah. I always like to claim that I would never go into the editing room and say, "Oh, as an art work, he would look better if we see a little bit more of Alan Mirren's hairdo or this and that." I follow what the experts of the field suggest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, they they knew what they were taking part in because clearly there's a satirical intent yeah. here and they were kind of happy to go along with... Let's, uh, let's turn your question around. How much did Gloria Swanson knew of what was going on when she accepted to do Sunset Boulevard? Yeah. You know, was she... As you say, like as they say in Rome, ci sei o ci fai? Mm -hmm. uh, are you are you there or are you pretending to be somewhere else? Yeah. We ne we never know, and that's a game that applies perfectly to art, to cinema, and certainly to this hybridization that I have created. I want to talk about Le Bal. That was perhaps the ultimate mm. uh, project. Oh, it yeah. was. Um, it took place in Los Angeles. Yes. Uh, it involved Lady Gaga. Indeed. Uh, wearing a costume designed by Miucha Prada, hat yes. by Frank Gehry. Yes. Baz Luhrmann did the Baz mask, did and the mask, Damien Hirst designed did the, the, the piano. piano. Yes. And all this was brought together for a five-minute song, yes. approximately, called yes. Speechless. Speechless. Um, <laughs> yes. We did an interview at the time, and I think you talked then about a, a phrase I like very much, the pathos of over-aspiration. Yes. Um, I mean, is that what that piece was about? Oh, and I've forgotten the Bolshoi Ballet. Yeah, Dances oh yes, from that's the not a small ballet. part. No, not since, a small part. Since they arrived, just like me today, yeah. one hour before the performance. A, a, an extraordinary feat of bringing things together yes. for five minutes. It's about many things. I mean, it's about the fear of the artist of never being up to the aspiration of or the expectation of the other people is the fear of the artist to never be up to his own aspiration or pretentiousness and then you know in a more critical way it's really about as a singer would say i want to give a lot to my audience you know i think we live in a moment in art history where there are uh, a lot of artists that are maybe not giving a lot to their audience but not because they don't want to but because there is a system that kind of imprisons them a little bit or freezes them <laughs> so i mean i always think of when eve klein would throw those women you know on the canvases and yeah. you know wow like uh, more give me more another celebration if you like of things passing very quickly was the 24-hour museum in, uh, indeed you want to leave people wanting more is that the idea again Oh, yes, or I want to prove them I can give a lot in a very short, in a short span of time. Of time. <laughs> it's really about generosity. I really, maybe theoretical, I'm saying nothing relevant, but I feel the, the, the larger the universe, the, the cultural universe we inhabit, or the larger the economical structure that is keeping the art alive is becoming, the more the artist should, should give yeah. without the fear of failing. Sure. If one of these kids that make expensive paintings, they make a lot of money, they, they should do a movie, they should do a pub video, they should do a biopic about their families, you know, yeah. because it's like, uh, it's about giving more, giving, giving. giving yeah. more. Yeah. Around that time, I think you told me that you were, I, I think the phrase you used was exhausted from dealing with fame and celebrity and, ah, and yes. you'd exhausted it as a subject is that totally it's totally exhausted that's why I haven't done a video or an artwork with a with a Hollywood uh, yeah. celebrity I my return to that if that could be called as such was when we did this Callas project with Rufus Wainwright yes. and we discussed with Rufus uh, who would you like to use and I said well you know I said it's, it's, it has to be an artist. It has to be one of the most famous artists in the world. Yeah. You, like, you, I don't care about Susan Sarandon. I mean, I mean, Meryl Streep. I mean, I'm on my knees for their skills. But like this time, conceptually, it has to be like uh, either mm. Jeff Koons with a wig or Cindy Sherman with yeah. another wig. Maybe the only two. <laughs> we are in the presence of sanitarized icons. Where are the rock stars? Where, where, are, where is Mick Jagger in a cab 
handcuffed. Perhaps in search of this decadence, um, Francesco, you decided to bring a church, to take a church to America. And that's when they stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, tell, tell us what the circumstances of that were. The church was a bunch of bricks. They had rebuilt another church in front of it. So from by each standard, meaning archaeological, logistical, legislative, and uh, the protection of the right of cult, even from that kind of perspective, we were fine. And the project was being supported by Maxi, which is an extension of the Minister of Culture. So yeah. it's like they made press conferences by saying Francesco Vezzoli would bring a church to New York. And, and the project was, as we said, to, to take this church, a and real bring church. It to, me, bring it to Mama PS1 and, and use it as a, as, a, as a kind yeah. of a cinematic venue to, to, to do my videos. Yes. Fantastically enough, they blocked this project under the circumstances that I was, technically speaking, illegally importing or exporting a church. I mean, a good lawyer took the, the whole thing into his hands yeah. and, uh, and obviously I was proved beyond uh, innocent. It's like uh, there is something in the legal Italian system called prescription when it's too many years go by and then basically you're clean yes. I was archi archived which for an artist is quite funny yeah, yeah. It being archived means that there is not one single proof of any sort that like can deem you have done anything even remotely wrong and as a substitution for that exhibition yeah. I bought five Roman sculptures and I painted over them which is technically way more illegal than exporting a church and that takes us to the, the show of yours, which has just been on in London at the Almin Rech Gallery. Yes, indeed. Um, Eternal Kiss, two parts from different eras. It's an anachronistic kiss, yes. an impossible kiss, but yes. also an eternal kiss. Yes, there are two heads that uh, we, we bought, uh, uh, that I bought actually, because that's, I consider the part of the art is when I take the Sotheby's or Christie's, Christie's catalogs of antiquities, archaeology, and I start putting crosses over the ones I hope I can afford. I bought two heads, I restored them, and I kind of reinstalled them in a way that is like the man is craving for, for a kiss from the woman. It's a bit of a long process because you need to find two heads that are quite similar, yeah. they're made of the same marble, and I like the idea that basically in such a moment of antiquities, you did not have a kiss. I mean, if you go to Pompeii, I mean, you, you can even find paintings of, you know, like condoms made of animals' interiors, but not many kisses. So I thought it was interesting to, to create a kind of a concept of an ancient sentimentality and to recreate a kiss that never existed, mm. like Caligula was a trailer for a movie that was never bound to be made. Let's come right up to date. What's your, what's your next project? What are you working um, on now? I've convinced David Holberg, who is the first dancer of American Ballet Theater and the Bolshoi, to, uh, for the opening of Performa, uh, to do a, um, a performance where he's going to dance Renaissance dance. So we hired the biggest expert in Europe of Renaissance movement and they will do this kind of dance that has never been seen before because for Renaissance, especially being Italian, you know, we have mm -hmm. sculptures, gardens, theatres, uh, but, mm -hmm. you know, performance is art. We didn't know how to find it and we found some rare books at La Sorbonne and, yeah. and it's going to be all like, you know, kneeling and caressing hands. It's going to be like Merce Cunningham meets Beato Angelico. I believe that, uh, as some famous philosopher said, or the director of the Vatican Museum said to me, you're just dealing with the famous philosophical question. It's like, who will free us from the Romans and the Greeks? That's not a question that a British artist maybe is supposed to deal with, but an Italian one, yes, at this point in history. So I've just taken up this very dangerous job. I may fail, I may survive, win hardly but if i survive it will be already a victory